Japan is preparing to do what the US couldn't, fire a railgun from a warship at hypersonic speed. With over $300 million spent and sea trials already underway, Tokyo's next live test could mark a breakthrough in electromagnetic weaponry. As Washington and Beijing watch closely, Japan's railgun may reshape the balance of power in future naval warfare. Japan is preparing to conduct a significant live-fire test of its prototype electromagnetic railgun system by the end of July, marking another milestone in its effort to operationalize a technology that has eluded several leading military powers. As per a report by the Eurasian Times on July 4th, the Japanese self-defense forces have mounted the railgun on JS Asuka, a dedicated test platform currently docked at Yokosuka Naval Base. This development follows Japan's earlier sea trials and a recent exhibition of the railgun at DSEI Japan 2025, the country's largest defense exposition. The Asuka testbed, with a displacement of 6,200 tons, is being used to evaluate the performance of the ship-based weapon system under operational conditions. The move comes after nearly a decade of work on the project, with serious development beginning in 2016. Over the last three years alone, Tokyo has invested more than $300 million in refining the railgun platform, demonstrating continued political and financial support for the program. According to reports, the Japanese railgun has achieved projectile speeds of around 4,988 miles per hour, or Mach 6.5 comma during previous trials, with an energy discharge of five megajoules. Earlier goals included a muzzle velocity of at least 4,473 miles per hour and a barrel life of 120 rounds. The key technological challenge remains reducing the power requirements for the weapon. Japan is reportedly working to optimize the railgun's energy efficiency to make it viable for long-term operational deployment. Unlike traditional guns, railguns use electromagnetic force not chemical propellants, to fire projectiles at hypersonic speeds. Two parallel rails and a conductive projectile form the core mechanism. When electric current flows through the rails, electromagnetic force launches the projectile at extraordinary velocity, relying on sheer kinetic energy for destructive effect. The underlying science is straightforward, but implementing it in a functional and reliable system poses numerous challenges. The main technical hurdles being high power requirements, rail durability and projectile guidance. A railgun requires an enormous amount of energy. Even small models can consume electricity equivalent to 10,000 homes. The intense electromagnetic and mechanical forces degrade the rails rapidly. Material innovation is needed to extend their lifespan. Also, metal projectiles traveling at Mach 6 or higher are difficult to guide and cannot rely on traditional satellite navigation. These issues have caused other nations to scale back or abandon their railgun projects. Most notably, the United States Navy shelved its railgun program in 2021 after investing over $500 million, citing limited range, low rate of fire and vulnerability of deployment platforms. The US Navy initially planned to install railguns on the Zumwalt-class destroyer USS Lyndon B. Johnson, but cancelled the initiative due to performance and logistical challenges. Military analyst Brian Clark noted that the system's 110-mile range placed ships within enemy missile coverage, reducing its tactical utility. China, meanwhile, has claimed significant breakthroughs in railgun research. In 2023, Chinese scientists said they had developed a projectile capable of receiving Beidou satellite signals during hypersonic flight, reportedly maintaining an error margin below 15 meters. However, these claims lack independent verification and practical demonstrations have not been widely observed.
Unlike the United States, Japan has taken a slower but more measured approach. Rather than rushing to deploy the technology, Tokyo appears committed to maturing the railgun system before fielding it. Long-term plans include deploying railguns on naval vessels for missile defence and anti-ship roles, as well as integrating them into mobile land-based systems such as trucks. These would provide Japan with a layered defence system, especially against hypersonic and ballistic missile threats in the Indo-Pacific region. The ability to strike incoming threats at hypersonic speeds with kinetic-only projectiles also aligns with Japan's broader strategy of non-nuclear deterrence and conventional force modernization. The cost-effectiveness of railgun projectiles compared to traditional missiles could offer economic advantages over time. The upcoming live-fire test is expected to further validate Japan's progress. Unlike the US, which faced political and budgetary constraints, Japan has quietly built momentum behind its railgun initiative with consistent funding and focused research and development. If successful, the test could accelerate plans for production and deployment. Japan's Ministry of Defense has signaled that railguns could be part of its next generation defense capabilities, particularly under its National Defense Program guidelines. Japan's railgun may also serve as a counter to the rapid militarization of the region by China and North Korea. With tensions escalating in the Taiwan Strait and East China Sea, Japan is seeking to enhance its defensive posture without breaching constitutional constraints on offensive force projection. Japan's railgun program represents a significant technological and strategic achievement. By advancing a technology many others have abandoned, Tokyo positions itself at the cutting edge of next-generation weaponry. While hurdles remain, Japan's measured and well-funded approach stands in contrast to the rushed, ultimately unsuccessful efforts elsewhere. If the upcoming test succeeds, could Japan soon become the world's first nation to operationally deploy a railgun? The answer may reshape the future of naval warfare in the Indo-Pacific and beyond.